This is the Beats Working Show. We're on a mission to redeem work, the word, the place, and the way. I'm your host, Mark Wright. Join us at Winning the Game of Work. Welcome to Beats Working Bites, where we share bite-sized wisdom aimed at redeeming work. Today's wisdom, the power of not doing things. So on the face of it, it sounds counterintuitive because doing things is how work gets done. But top entrepreneurs understand the value of not doing things. So where do you start? Julia Waller from Strategic Coach helps entrepreneurs discover their unique abilities. These are the things you're really good at and passionate about. You love doing them. They give you energy and they add value to others. Julia encourages people to lean into their unique abilities and then start weeding out all the other stuff, even what we're good at if it doesn't give us joy. Here's Julia. I think a lot of people are wired, well, geez, I should get better at those, kind of like the school system, right? I I should get better at Mm. that. I should get better. I had one client. I should get better at project managing. Like you just, who who am I to give that up? You know, especially if you're an entrepreneur and you've built up your business through hard work and grit and determination, you just had to do everything, chief cook and bottle washer kind of mentality, right? It's hard to let that stuff go. And until you can see the value of leveraging yourself and letting that go. And if you didn't spend that time project managing, this one client was a really big strategic thinker. I said, if you could spend that time thinking strategically, kind of like you, Mark, what would the value be now to your business if you did that? And how would that feel? And what would that be like? Then it was like, oh, actually, that would be pretty huge if I did that. So once you see the why Mm. to let go, then you can give yourself permission. And there was a little bit of like, well, who am I to hire somebody? And so it's a mindset shift. It's a mindset shift from, hey, I'm going to do everything myself to, oh, I'm going to work in collaboration with a team. And we're going to do this together. And then you can go way bigger, further, faster, and have more fun along the way because you're not grinding it out. Beats Working podcast creator and Work P2P founder Dan Rogers is here now to break this down further. So Dan, what's been your experience when it comes to the value of not doing things? Yeah, I I think if you follow sort of common, well-intentioned advice, you'll put yourself on the continuum of I hate my job. And I don't care if you are the owner or you're working for somebody else. If you follow common advice, well-intentioned, good common advice, um, you'll end up because most people hate their job. And there's a reason for that. And the reason for that is as a business owner, how you get off of that is in the question that you're asking here. When you get to a place as a business owner that there's too much for you to do, you're usually, I mean, almost always, at least initially, you're the primary value creator. You're the magic behind the scenes. And you can do that a bunch of different ways. Sometimes you're the one that actually produces the thing, or sometimes you're the one that just manages the public facing, but you are the quote unquote rainmaker. And when you get to that place where it's too much for you to do, there's a key decision point and following practical advice will put heavy, heavy, uh, hard guardrails around. So you stay on that continuum of a hate my job. So what Julia is hinting at here and what we definitely encourage people to do is to actually figure out precisely what you're doing and to break that down so you can have systematic performance so it doesn't take the wizard to do the magic. There isn't actually any magic. We all are actually doing something. We're all incredibly repetitive. There isn't anyone that's totally making stuff up. There, Everyone has a process. They just haven't t- taken the time. What I would encourage, I think what Julia would say is figure out exactly what you are doing and figure out how you can do more of that, but only that. And the best way in in a unique ability uh, concept inside a strategic coach, you literally just keep doing that same thing and and you give everything else away to other people. I take it a little step further. We take a little step further and say, hey, figure out what that is and make it so anybody can do that thing or people with the right skill set can do that thing so you can build an entire system around that. They sort of encourage you just to put people around you. We, instead of making Dan wonderful and Dan's just going to say his his unique ability. How can we make that unique ability part of the system itself? And then I can lean even deeper into what I do. So the game it's, you know, Mark, we've talked about this many times. I think it's impossible to figure out what to do. It, It just mathematically it's impossible, but it is actually quite easy to figure out what not to do. And so I think this is just another great example of, uh, it's why we have nine restraints. We, we think the game is 
figuring out what not to do. And it starts with sticking to what you do really good uh, and, and, and letting those other things go. Don't just delegate them, create a system behind it. Otherwise, if you delegate it, you'll just end up really hating your job much faster. You'll get to scale. <laughs> you'll, you'll scale it hating your job. Dan, talk about the concept of energy management as opposed to time management, because I think a lot of people think that if you just have time management under control, it's all worth it. But you really believe in the concept of energy management, right? Yeah. And I, uh, it's certainly not anything that we invented. And this was hinted by some of the greats going way back to the Cubbies and the Zig Ziglar's. I mean, like some of the stuff that's been around for a very, very long time. But I was fortunate that before it got bought by Johnson & Johnson, I went to the Human Performance Institute down in Orlando. And Dr. Jim Lair, great person to Google there, brilliant guy, has lots of books, just actually published one recently. Um, he's the one that actually hammered it home. And he hammered it home for me because I saw him talk at a thing before I went to the training. And he just put it so simply that I just, a knucklehead like me couldn't let go of it. He's like, time management is a farce. You can't manage something you can't control. Energy management, however, is possible. And let's face it, it isn't, we don't want time. We want the right energy at the right time. And I love how he says it because it's so literal. Without energy, you're dead. <laughs> so when someone speaks that succinctly, you've got my attention. And he's got a lot more material behind that. A lot of really heavy duty, awesome science, along with a lot of real practical stuff. But that's that was really what brought it home for me is what I wanted was I wanted to show up with the right energy and the relationships that mattered the most at the right time. And when that happens, everything's perfect. And when it doesn't, it doesn't matter if I have time or not. It, I'm miserable. Right? So yeah. yeah, brilliant, brilliant stuff on that. Like I said, Dr. Layer and others uh, have covered it. It's a great example of uh, one of our restraints. Don't be arrogant. Copy off the smartest kids in class. And we're, we're very happy to copy off or Dr. Layer and others on that. That's awesome. And because we only have so much energy in a day, knowing what not to do is even more important. That makes complete sense. If there's time, I'd love to share one story that Dr. Lair shared that, that, that really hammers this home. So there was a business executive who was absolutely militant that he would be home every night for dinner. And he was. And uh, something happened. There was some huge crisis. And he called home and said, hey, I can't make it. It was that big of an emergency. So he didn't get home. He didn't get home until like 8.30 or 9 o'clock or whatever, to the extent he had, he had two small kids. And so he missed dinner. But what he did is he went and he spent about five minutes and he read with his, his two children. And the way that Dr. Lair tells the story is, is the next day he was home at dinner. And the question they asked him, the question they asked him at dinner the next day was, when was the next time he was going to work late? Because he showed up with a totally different energy at that time than he did normally at dinner. And so I think that is a really great mm -hmm. example of it really matters how we show up, not when we show up. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, Dan Rogers, thanks so much. Thank you, thank you. I'm Mark Wright. If you've enjoyed Beats Working Bites, check out the full podcast. New episodes of Beats Working drop every Monday. Join us in our mission to redeem work, the word, the place, and the way.